Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on this training. It's the first in four trainings on the mobile data collection platform, ComCare. I'm Meg Gibbon, and I'm the program manager for the Meta Project. Our facilitators today are two ComCare experts, Alexandra Morgan Kisarale and Jeremy Waxman of Dimaji, which is a ComCare software company. Please note that all attendees are currently muted. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to type them in the chat throughout the training, and we'll address those during Q&A. Um, and if you have any issues getting connected um, or uh, any questions, I'll be uh, answering, answering those throughout over chat. And with that, I'll hand it over to Alex to get started on the presentation. Hi, everyone. Um, and thank you, Meg, for that kind introduction. Again, my name is Alexandra Martin Kisarale, um, and I'm joined by my colleague Jeremy Waxman. I'll um, do uh, a bit more detailed introduction of the two of us in one moment, but um, we're really excited to be working with you over the next four weeks. And we're really excited about this training series uh, that we've been able to develop with Meta uh, called Collecting Client Data Using ComCare Mobile Technology. As Meg mentioned, this is our first session. And so we'll be focusing on introducing uh, ComCare technology to you and talking a bit about its benefits uh, to refugee service providers. So I want to start by introducing the training team. Um, I am Alexandra for the third part. <laughs> I am a project manager with Demaki. Demaki is actually a software company that develops technology specifically for low resource and underserved settings. And so a lot of the work that I do is actually travel um, to various countries around the world and work with partners to build mobile applications for community health and education and agriculture. I also serve as the education sector lead, and I work on the team that manages the Mobile Academy, which you'll get an opportunity um, to use over the course of September. Um, again, joined by my colleague, uh, Jeremy Waxman, who is a senior project manager um, at the Maki and does similar work um, to what I do, traveling and working with um, partners uh, all over the world, um, as well as in the United States, working in various sectors, helping to manage the Maki Academy, as well as um, working on our impact team, which is a really um, interesting thing to note because our impact team focuses on helping us to understand uh, how much ComCare or technology is having an impact in improving development outcomes. So Demazi is a social enterprise, um, which means that we're a socially conscious technology company. Uh, all of the work that we do is focused on helping to promote uh, a public good, to advance some sort of development outcome, some sort of community development outcome. We were founded in 2002 out of Harvard and MIT, and we have over 10 years of experience implementing more than 300 projects in over 50 countries. Our team is comprised of more than 100 engineering and implementation staff. While we're headquartered in the United States, we also have offices in Senegal, India, and South Africa, as well as permanent staff in other countries around the world. And we're the makers of ComCare which is a leading open source mobile platform for the last mile. So we have a few words in there that you may not be completely familiar with, uh, but we're going to talk a, a little bit about those um, today, and um, we'll also talk about them in some of the upcoming sessions. So just a bit about this series at a high level. Meta and Demagi partners to offer a four-part training series on how to use the ComCare software. And essentially, uh, we want to show you how to convert paper forms into digital forms that can be used for mobile data collection and case management. And when we talk about mobile data collection, what we're referring to is the ability to collect data on a phone or a tablet and then access that data on a computer where you can analyze it and use it for decision-making and reporting. Our goal is to introduce you to ComCare and help you gain skills and confidence in using it to support your program. And what we think and what we, what we are, are looking forward to is uh, that by the end of the four sessions, uh, you will be well equipped to build 
basic mobile application. And so we'll actually talk um, in a bit more detail later on in this session, um, specifically about how the training will be structured um, going forward. But first, I want to introduce you to ComCare. Essentially, um, what we do at the MAGI and what we do with ComCare is empower frontline workers across sectors by building mobile applications to simplify their work um, and help them gather data in low resource settings um, in underserved communities around the world. And we do that across a number of sectors using the same technology called ComCare. And the way that this works very simply at a high level is that um, anyone is able to log on to ComCare HQ, uh, which I'll show you a little bit later, um, use that to build an application online, install and use that application on a phone or a tablet, and then collect information in the field. Once that information is collected and there's a Wi-Fi or a network um, signal that's available, so data, um, as we call it, uh, then that data is sent to ComCare HQ and it's available to be viewed or exported. And then that data can be analyzed and reported however your program needs it to be. So what's great about ComCare is that it's been designed specifically for non-programmers. So you don't actually need to have a technical background in order to use ComCare and, and actually design, deploy, and use these mobile applications. And so mobile applications take on, um, can, be, can be created uh, for a number of different purposes and can have a variety of levels of, of complexity. Um, we're showing a few things here that we think um, are of interest to your particular program. Uh, data collection, so that can be something like a, a client intake form or an evaluation. Client tracking, so this ability to track information, to collect and track information about an individual over time. Client counseling, um, where uh, particular messages are provided as part of the application. But ComCare can actually enhance those messages by um, including multimedia, such as images or sound clips or videos. What's so support, especially um, when community development workers are um, adhering to a particular protocol, sometimes a, a mobile application um, is able to guide them to the right questions at the right time. And so a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of programs uh, build applications that are specifically designed as job aids for their workers. Text messages to clients uh, is another thing that can be done in ComCare where um, clients themselves receive a message to complete a certain action, um, such as take their medication, or um, they receive a reminder for an appointment. And finally, um, worker monitoring. Uh, one of the things that ComCare allows is for programs to see within um, ComCare HQ information about their workers. So um, started in time um, before when a form was started, um, when a form was completed, um, and which order forms were completed, et cetera. And it really empowers programs to provide supportive supervision. As mentioned, ComCare is being used around the world. Um, it's being used in more than 60 countries for a host of purposes. Um, and, and that makes us actually the most uh, widely used, most evidence-based platform, um, mobile platform on the market presently. There's been more than 50 studies um, completed by either Demagi or our, our academic partners or our implementation partners um, presenting a, a wealth of um, evidence for uh, ComCare. And we'll actually share the link to our evidence base if you're interested in understanding the impact that the software has had when used well within the context of programs. So what's the big takeaway for you 
um, Comcare is an incredibly flexible platform that helps alleviate some of the challenges workers face as they help clients and communities achieve better outcomes. So what kind of challenges do community develop or development workers face? You all know this much better than we do, but um, from our experience, we know that there um, are a number of common challenges that um, development workers um, have come across. So limited education and training opportunities, as well as complex protocols. And so while a number of community development workers um, receive training to do their jobs and to um, follow the protocols that have been outlined by their organizations or um, government entities, a lot of times programs only have so much budget um, to support the training of their, of their staff. And so this presents challenges at times in, in actual service delivery. Challenge number two, um, inefficient paper systems as well as um, as a result of these systems, some difficulty in tracking client data. And so sometimes paper systems are great um, and, and there are a number of advantages to using paper, um, but there are also a number of drawbacks. And, and sometimes um, it is difficult for workers to keep track um, of their client data efficiently and effectively um, to also use that data dynamically um, or analyze that data quickly enough to use it in the program in real time to service their clients. And finally, um, in a number of places around the world, and sometimes even in the United States, um, community development workers work in remote places, um, a hard to reach location, or locations that are just completely underserved, where there's not a lot of infrastructure in place. Uh, and so um, using these sorts of applications, um, especially when they're far away from perhaps a central office, allows that data flow um, to continue um, despite the geographical limitations. So what would happen if you gave community development workers a mobile phone with a mobile application on it? Well, technology is certainly not a panacea. Um, it, it certainly doesn't solve all of the challenges um, that we outlined just a minute ago, but also many other challenges not listed. Um, we have found that when technology is used well, when it's used appropriately, um, when programs are strong and they understand how they want to leverage the affordances of technology uh, to strengthen their programming, uh, a number of benefits um, are experienced by the workers as well as the programs themselves. And so from our research and the research of our academic partners, we've learned that um, using Comcare has helped to um, support more knowledgeable workers, help workers become more knowledgeable in, in their job, um, has supported better decision making, as well as more, efficient, uh, more efficiency and higher productivity amongst workers. And the net benefit of that is better outcomes for the clients and communities that are being served um, by various workers, um, including um, those who work in your organizations providing services uh, to refugees and, and vulnerable populations uh, within the United States. And so I think this is a good point um, to actually show you what Comcare looks like uh, on a phone. And so I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, uh, Jeremy, uh, who will do a demonstration for you so you can kind of see Comcare in action. Okay, great. Um, so thanks for all the, the introduction and, and background there, Alex. Uh, what I'm going to do now is show you what Comcare really looks like in action. Um, and so I'm going to use a, a basic app that we like to use because it can demonstrate some of the, the features pretty quickly. And the, the main theme of this app is tracking pregnancy. So I know all of you are working on lots of different uh, types of data collection and different types of case management. And so I'm just going to give uh, one example here to kind of walk through. And so what I have here is I have my Android phone connected up to the computer here. And so I'm, you can imagine in this uh, 
example here that you've gone onto ComCareHQ, the website, and you've built out your tool, your application for pregnancy tracking. And now um, it's on my phone. And as the, a worker who's going to be going out and tracking pregnancies over time, I'm just going to log in. So I'm logging in here as Sarah into ComCare. And, and now you can start to see what it looks like. So um, a, a lot of the core pieces of ComCare are similar across all uh, programs. So ComCare is a, a software platform. You can imagine a little bit like um, if you've used SurveyMonkey or Google Forms, it's all one piece of software. So you can go on and add whatever specific questions you want to a form, and you can configure it in different ways. And ComCare works a little bit like that. So there's a core piece that's the same, and then um, you can go in and put in your uh, content that is specific to whatever your program needs to do. So if I go in here and, and to get started, uh, you can see in this particular application, there's a number of different tasks I can do. I can make home visits, I can follow up with referrals, um, I can monitor the delivery of a pregnancy, or I can remove people uh, that I've been tracking. So I'm just going to uh, dive in here a little bit so you get a, a sense of what things look like when you're actually collecting data. And over the course of the next three sessions, we're going to get a lot more hands-on practice with this. So you'll get to um, get very familiar with the uh, appearance of these forms. So first I'm going to click on Home Visits here at the top. I can see a long list of people that have been uh, previously registered and are being tracked, that have pregnancies being tracked. Uh, so you can imagine that you had a, a paper-based system which might have one line per person being tracked. Uh, and this is kind of the digital representation of that. So you have one entry here per person. If I click on any of these people, I can see uh, a little bit more detail about them. Uh, let's see here. Let me get this refreshed. Uh, I can see a little more detail about them, so that's kind of like speaking in a little bit to that particular record. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to add a new record to my list of people that I'm tracking. So I'm going to click on register a new pregnancy. And now I'm going to go ahead and fill out a form. So just like uh, you have an intake form or something, this is kind of the pregnancy registration form. So I can go ahead and, and register. So let me register Jamie here. Uh, and what you can do that is uh, a general advantage of digital data collection over paper-based systems is you can build in a lot of uh, what we call validation and built-in skip logic. So you can require people to fill in certain fields, uh, and you can make sure that the things that people are entering are within um, an allowable range. So here, for example, we have to know the, the date of birth of the, the mother. So it's asking, is that date known, yes or no? So if I choose yes, uh, I have the option of entering um, entering that birth date. And if I choose no, then I have the option of entering the age directly. So that's kind of how there, there's like lots of layers to this and branching logic that you can build in, which makes the, the job of the, whoever is using this um, uh, much easier. So I'm going to type in here an age. You can see, um, let's see if there's any. So there's some uh, validation logic built in here as well. And you can kind of decide for whatever your um, your paper form has, you know, maybe you've had a lot of experience. You see that people often enter, um, you know, too many digits or something. People are entering instead of 55, 555. So you can build in validations to prevent that type of thing from happening. So if I try to enter something in that range, I can proceed. Enter a little information about phone number. Estimated uh, delivery date. So I'll go ahead and enter that. Calendar. So you can see there's different types of questions that you can use, uh, which again, you'll get uh, a little more experience with. But now you see there's date, there's text, there's multiple choice questions, all of that. Um, in this particular application, they've chosen to add in a lot of multimedia just to make, um, to make things a little clearer um, for any given question. I'm just going to choose a couple of conditions here for this person, and then I'm going to finish that registration process. So once I've registered someone, if I go... Uh, back to my main menu, and I see my main list. So now here's the, at the bottom, I have um, Jamie, who I just registered, and I can see estimated date of delivery. I can go in and see um, some follow-up information or some of the information I previously collected. Do a follow-up visit. And so this is what case management looks like. You're not just, uh, you can just collect uh, one-time information. It's a unique element of calm care is that you can create kind of a dynamic list of whatever you're tracking over time, and you can update that information, which can be very helpful um, just from a workflow perspective from whoever is using the application. 
is also useful when you're analyzing data. So you can link different interactions with one person or one facility to have a, a, a holistic record of, of data about that, that person or place. So if I go in here to, um, to a follow-up visit, um, so because I chose the, um, the person that I, I chose, Jamie, from the list, this data is already going to be linked to that person's record. So you can imagine I'm in the background building out this, this uh, database of information. And now I can go through and just fill out some, some information. I'm, I have the option to update information that I previously collected, um, or I can just go in and, and add, um, add new fields during this home, home visit. So I'm just going to fill in a couple of these fields here. Look for danger signs. And this gets into, um, some decision support, where if I am choosing, for example, that this woman has had uh, some pregnancy danger signs, then I'm prompted to um, to provide counseling on those uh, or like additional information on those specific uh, symptoms. You can also see here. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but there's also so, uh, audio messages or videos, which are often used as supplementary tools that are used in, in service delivery to clients or can also be used if there's some sort of complex thing that the user has to do in order to give them some additional information as they're going um, going through submitting data or, or filling out this form. You can see here that because I selected uh, some symptoms for this particular person, I'm being prompted to make a referral. So this is, again, uh, is like another level of the branching logic where you can say if certain things are um, – you know, if this person meets certain conditions, then I want to maybe put them into another workflow or prompt the user to fill out a different form about that person. And so I may leave the, the basic demo of the mobile at that. But what I do want to show is I just fill out those couple forms um, on the mobile. And then what you're going to uh, get to see a lot of is that uh, you'll get to orient to CompCreateHQ. So don't worry too much about all these buttons, all these different sections. But I just want to show... Uh, like the general workflow that Alex had outlined in one of her slides where we've deployed the application to the phone and filled out a couple of forms and then submitted those forms to the server. And so now if I go um, go to ComCreateHQ, I can see that that data are already available here, so I can inspect that data. You know, as a monitoring role, I can verify that um, these data meet the right criteria, and I can update this data if I want, so I can verify the name here and the phone number, um, as well as um, I can see that in the background, the GPS location of where the form was completed is filled out, so that's another element that can be very helpful for monitoring workers, you know, where a particular form is filled out, um, and we'll, we'll go into more of this later, but just want to demonstrate that this uh, data is then available here and can be exported for whatever analysis needs to be done uh, in Excel or other statistical analysis software. Uh, great. So I think that's all I wanted to show for a quick demo that may have raised more questions than, than anything, but we're going to gradually go through some of this um, over the coming sessions. And we're actually going to go into a Q&A, um, opening up the floor for some questions on what we've discussed so far before we go into the next half of the webinar. Thanks so much, uh, Alex and Jeremy, for that uh, first section. Um, if there are any other questions now, feel free to send those in the chat, and I'll bring them up. But I have a few um, to just start us off. Personally, I know that a lot of the use cases that we've seen for ComCare uh, in the past have been in that international context, like you were mentioning, in, in remote areas. Um, but we also know that we have a really interesting opportunity here to begin thinking about how we can use ComCare in the U.S. context for um, resettled refugees. So I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about how uh, the attendees on this call can use ComCare in the U.S. context. Yeah, Jeremy has done actually a lot of domestic work, and so I'll let him chime in here with some examples of things that we've done here. Um, I'll, I'll preface um, his remarks by saying that one of the things that we wanted to emphasize in this first section of, of this webinar is that ComCare itself is, is a flexible agnostic platform, and so as much as it's been used in international settings, which is in part a function of how much more um, prevalent uh, mobile technology is and sort of utility and popularity um, than in the United States. Comcare doesn't really know that 
that you're in the United States versus um, Burkina Faso, um, or that um, you're working in health versus in um, refugee resettlement, the platform can be used for a variety of purposes. And so if you're doing data collection, if you're doing um, client tracking um, uh, for different populations that you're working with, if you want to be able to support um, those who are interacting with those refugees through audio and imaging, um, um, counseling messages, et cetera, all of those things um, are available within the ComCare platform. Um, and so I'll say that as a general statement, but to, to really get a bit more specific on some of the things we've been able to do in the United States, I'll, I'll hand that off to Jeremy. Sure. Thanks, Alex. So um, I can mention a couple of the U.S.-based projects that I've worked on, and then maybe just a couple of thoughts generally on, on sort of identifying appropriate use cases for ComCare. Uh, so some of the projects we've worked on are, have been uh, tied to research programs or to universities. So one project I've worked on a lot over the last couple of years is out of UCLA, uh, and it's a program that looks at uh, follow-up with patients that have had a stroke and they're kind of residing in the community. And so they have a team of um, community health workers who are teamed with uh, care managers like nurse practitioners or physician assistants who are facility-based. And they have this sort of care coordination type piece where they identify people who, who need a little, little bit of extra follow-up or extra help kind of coordinating their various appointments and various medications. And so at the facility, these care managers use a form of calm care, which is available on the computer to do data entry, uh, which we call cloud care, uh, which has a very similar um, structure, but it's just like a computer-based interface. Uh, so they fill in information on that, and then a subset of the information is uh, pre-populated on the community health worker's phone. And so then they uh, use that to kind of go around and prioritize who they're visiting and to um, walk through some sort of complex algorithms with them about uh, their financial situation or about um, mental health or uh, other, other care areas that are specific to them based on uh, whatever the clinician identified. Uh, so that's one, one project which is like a, a community health worker model, but in the U.S. Uh, another project that I worked on in, uh, also in L.A. Uh, was uh, a text message-based element of calm care where essentially people in a specific high-risk population were enrolled in a program where they got uh, different reminder messages over time. So this was less for data collection and more for kind of behavior change. So um, people had their risk profiles assessed during an intake process, and then based upon those profiles, they received um, randomized but targeted messages every day. So they got five different text messages, and they got text message surveys as well. Um, that were short ways that they could reply just with a quick update on on how they were doing uh, throughout the course of the uh, throughout the course of the program, and then just like that data in the uh, app that I demoed was you know sort of populates a person's record over time. That SMS based data also populated the record over time, and um, you know SMS or text message has a lot of advantages. I mean everyone uh, in the U.S. like the phone penetration is very good and literacy is very high, so there's a um, a lot as far as not having to worry about people's specific types of phones or app versions or things like that. But you are limited in kind of the richness uh, of data that you can um, complete, and there's also cost implications as well to using um, a lot of uh, text messages. Uh, in addition to those programs, you know, we, we've done some other research studies that look at uh, medication adherence, where Comcare is really used more to, to track um, the participants in the study over time, sort of replacing uh, paper-based systems, and um, and also for tracking the health in, uh, we did a, a program with uh, migrant health promotion, which was also a little bit like a community health worker model, but going out and just uh, helping these kind of social workers uh, track some of their clients' information over time uh, as a supplement or replacement to paper-based systems. So I think anything where you are doing that kind of tracking over time or any sort of paper-based data collection system where you have people that are out and about, not necessarily sitting in front of a computer um, or needing the flexibility to not always be in front of a computer. Uh, and then you have forms being filled out that are entered into a computer. At, when there's any sort of system that has those steps, I think those are pretty good candidates for some sort of uh, digital system. Those are all really great examples. Thanks so much for that. We had a few questions about functionality on ComCare, so I'll just give you a few quickly. I think those might be quick answers. Um, first, is ComCare HIPAA compliant? 
Second, can you enter data offline using ComCare? Um, and third, can uh, you also enter data for the same uh, data collection using a computer um, to complement what you collect on the phone? So I'm just seeing them. I'm going to go through them in the order they're in here. So what, the first question about um, whether ComCare can be used offline, uh, definitely can be used offline. Once you have the app installed on a phone um, and you've logged in one time, then you no longer need uh, internet connectivity in order to do your work. So of course you do need connectivity to eventually submit that data. We have a lot of projects where people will work offline for extended periods, including even in LA, they work in buildings sometimes that don't have great connectivity or visiting people in homes that don't have uh, internet, so they use tablets and, and they just sync the data uh, every week or so when they go uh, into the office. Uh, the, the data access part, like going onto Comcare HQ and looking at the data that does require uh, internet access, however. Uh, as far as whether data can be entered through a computer, we do have a tool that does that uh, that I mentioned in one of the examples called CloudCare. Um, and I'd say it's, you know, it's not quite as complex as what you can do on the mobile app, but it, you know, as far as just filling in forms, uh, it's a great point about with qualitative data where you just want to be able to type in information directly. Um, and one, one way that that is often used is a complement to the mobile. So you can have the same app used on the tablet and used on a computer, and then the data can be shared back and forth between those. So that's another um, uh, a way to maybe, if you have some qualitative data you want to enter on a, on a laptop or a desktop machine, and then maybe some that you want the flexibility to collect uh, on a mobile system, then you can do uh, both of those. Uh, and then as far as whether ComCare is HIPAA compliant, ComCare is HIPAA compliant. We do have different um, software plans, and so the HIPAA compliance is because it requires us to do various certifications, or I don't know the exact details of it, but that is available um, on, on the, the um, higher level plans. And is that, did I get all this? You did, that's great. Okay. And I think what we might do is just uh, move on to the second half, and we had a couple other questions, but save those for the end to make sure we get through all of the content. Okay, great. Absolutely, thank you, Meg. So, uh, we mentioned earlier what we're trying to accomplish in the training, but now I wanna talk just a little bit about the training theory structure. So we plan to use an instructional approach um, called I do, we do, you do um, to support both the demonstration of application building skills as well as participant um, skill building, actually support the process of your skills being built in ComCare. And so the, each training session will consist of two components. The first component will be a live session, and the second will be independent um, self-paced practice. And so for the live session, we'll have the live webinar uh, hosted on WebEx. Uh, I believe everyone on this call has um, received those invitations uh, for, the, for our various sessions that we'll have. And if not, um, I, I know that Meg can add you to that. So during these live sessions going forward, uh, we selected a basic client intake and evaluation form to use for the purposes of this course. So each week we'll use ComCare HQ, um, which you saw uh, during uh, Jeremy's demonstration, to actively build a section uh, of the form. So over the course of a few sessions, we'll actually build out the entire form. And so um, the trainer, whoever is the trainer for that day, will actually show some app building on the screen. And if you have the computer set up, um, for example, if you have multiple screen monitors, um, if you are comfortable toggling between the WebEx presentation and ComCare HQ, uh, then we, we encourage you to follow along as we show you how to build the form. Um, otherwise, we will be sure to provide um, information on how to build the form that we built during the live training so that you can engage in, in the building during independent practice. And so this, the second component is optional, where we are providing supplemental materials um, and or practice activities, which are all hosted on uh, Damaki Academy. And so if you pre-registered, you've already, you're already enrolled in the course um, and should have received instructions um, from Meg for uh, registering an account on Damaki Academy. Um, and if you've 
register, then you have access to the course. Um, if you did not pre-register, please contact Meg so that she can get you enrolled, and then um, you'll also get instructions for registering um, an account on Demarcy Academy. And so there, each week, we'll be adding um, relevant activities. All of the activities or um, information, the materials that we provide will be related to the live sessions. Um, oftentimes adding to the application that we're building together so that you can have opportunity to practice. So again, independent practice is optional. It's very much dependent on your schedule and your level of interest in learning um, how to build uh, basic content applications. Uh, but there's a couple benefits to actually doing them uh, between sessions. One, you'll get an opportunity to uh, practice and, and enhance your skills. But secondly, um, these, these activities will provide preparation for the next session. So for example, for session one, the material that you'll, you'll find in Demagi Academy is a short course that we call CompCare Fundamentals, which provides an overview of key concepts and terminology that we use in CompCare. And, and going through that course, which only takes about an hour, hour and a half to complete, will provide you with the background that, that you'll need for our next session where we actually jump into ComCare and start doing some app building. And so each week um, or each after each session, we'll have things like that to support your learning over the course of this month. So communication and support, we want to make sure that you know how you can get in touch with us um, and with one another, as well as how you can access support. And so in terms of communication, you can email the training team at academy at um, That will reach um, Jeremy and myself and other members of the Demagi Academy team. And, and we'll be able to reply to your email in, in that way. Should you have questions in the coming weeks as we, as we start to introduce application building and you start to get familiar um, and start to work in uh, Comptory HQ, questions may arise, we want to make sure that you know how to get in touch with us. Please feel free to ask us questions as you're, as you're moving through and learning. Um, we want to support you in that. We're also going to set up a, a discussion forum within the online course itself where you can pose questions to us or others participating in this series. And so that forum will be available um, ahead of the next session. In terms of support, we have a number of resources available. Demagi.com slash learn is sort of the one-stop shop from there. Uh, you can link out to a number of our resources, including um, access to um, our support uh, team and the types of support available, our help site, our um, ComCare users, Google group. Um, you, can, you can join uh, that listserv. So those things will all be available to you. And so um, just to quickly review the schedule, as mentioned, um, this is the first session. And so what we want to do is ensure that you have a, a strong foundation going into the next uh, three sessions, uh, which will be held on the 13th, the 15th, and the 22nd. Um, and so this first sort of opportunity is with uh, is Compare Fundamentals. I did forget to mention that we'll actually post this uh, video recording, this, this webinar recording, um, in a few different places, uh, one of which will be the Meta website, but we'll also have the recording within the course itself. So if after a session you want to go through the webinar again, you'll have that opportunity. If for whatever reason you're not able to join us live, you can, you can access the, the recording within the course and then proceed to the independent practice activities um, as, it, as time permits. So I, I want to make sure that uh, everyone gets an opportunity to see what I'm talking about here. And then I think the only other thing we want to do is um, get everyone set up or at least show you how to set up an account on ComCare HQ because that's what you'll need in order to start app building. So when you log into the Margie Academy, that's academy.demagi.com. You'll be able to select your course. Um, most of you, if not all of you, will only have one course if you're already enrolled. 
and that would be AB 281, um, the meta training series. And so when you click on that course, you'll land immediately on the course info. And so you'll see here that we have an overview of this course, and we also have all of the live sessions listed here. Um, just as a reminder, a little information about how to post questions and comments. So the information I just provided you, what sort of information you'll find here, et cetera. We also have our contact information towards the bottom. So in order to see the actual course information, you're going to click here. So um, right now, if you were to log in to, to Mozzie Academy, you'll see that for session one webinar recording, um, we're not yet done with that. And so when I click here, it'll tell you that the video is forthcoming. And so we'll make sure that we post that here. But then secondly, you'll see that ComCare Fundamentals is provided. And so ComCare Fundamentals is, again, our short course, um, which provides a conceptual overview of ComCare. And you'll get really acquainted with some of the terminology we use, some of the data and reporting um, features and options that are available. We have a short sort of test at the end, and then you can request a statement of accomplishment upon completion of the course. So that's the Markey Academy. Um, and if you have any questions, please drop those into the chat. We'll want to try to answer those before the end of this session. So in our last few minutes, I want to make sure that everyone knows how to both navigate to Comcare HQ and also to create uh, an account. So if you navigate to www.comcarehq.org, um, you'll land on this page. And signing up is actually really, really easy and it's free. And so you'll enter your email. Okay, and it's going to ask you to provide your name. It already has my email address in here. Oh, goodness. If you try to do a weak password, it will tell you so. It's going to make it get better. And then you can optionally add your phone number. Click next. And what you're going to do is create your first project. And so a project is a space, sort of a secure web portal within Comcare HQ that, is, that will house all of your um, applications. And so we actually have an entire section on this in Fundamentals, so I won't go over it right now. But we'll want to create a project space um, which will sort of look, serve as your workspace um, over the course of this series. So I'm just going to call it Meta Training. And I'm going to agree to the end user license agreement and then press finish. I'm going to create my account. Okay. And then it will send you a confirmation email. And so you want to confirm that. And then after, after you've done that, you'll enter Comcare HQ. Okay, so once, I, once I'm actually in there, I can see a dashboard, which we'll talk about during our next session. You see the applications and you can access different um, category components of the Comcare platform, as well as toggle to other projects that um, you've created. Okay, so Meg, in terms of setting up these accounts, do we want everyone to try to do that now, or um, do we feel pretty confident that everyone can set one up prior to our next session? Well, what we can do is take a few questions and, and kind of wrap up the rest of our session here and then allow people to begin that process for themselves 
on the end uh, of this call. Um, and then what That's I'll also perfect. do is well, we'll, we can make those instructions available to people who may not have had a chance to do so prior uh, to the next uh, webinar. That sounds great. So that was the end. That was the end for us. Um, any final questions? We had a few come through, a couple uh, interesting questions about um, ComCare's features and, and uses. So if anyone would like to go ahead and begin making their ComCare HQ account, as Alex has just shown, they can uh, do so now or um, you know, hang around to listen to some additional Q&A. So one question about adding ComCare to existing data collection platforms. So many of us have many databases we're using already to track different types of client data, um, and we certainly wouldn't want to duplicate and enter that data in multiple places. Um, is it better to use ComCare for programs that are new and maybe are not using any other system, or is there a way to easily you know, export data so that it may be able to communicate with some of the existing systems we have? Uh, sure. So I, I think it's definitely a, a bit of a cleaner startup if you're trying it with a new, like a, a new program you're setting up or something where you don't have a pre-existing uh, database or, or system that you're using. But I, there are ways to kind of integrate with existing records depending upon how, uh, like the complexity of it and how your systems are set up. Just a couple ideas or different uh, ways that people do this. One is by using that existing system or like sorry, if you already have an existing system, you may already be pretty well placed to figure out what would be the best way to design something as far as improving the data collection component of that, as far as maybe introducing better validation or knowing exactly what to name all the variables, uh, that type of thing. And so if you have a particular format, say you're already doing some system and it populates a database with one row per response, then you can make ComCare output data in a in a uh, similar structure, so you like have similar variables and you have similar ways the data is coded, and you're only including the specific subset of variables. Then you can just do something like exporting that data into a CSV or Excel file, and then importing it into another system. There are other ways of doing it which are a bit more complex to set up. Uh, one is using the ComCare's APIs. So you can use those. These are like programming interfaces where you can uh, push ComCare data into other systems. So ComCare data comes out structured in a very specific way. Um, and then if you have a system set up that can uh, receive that data and sort of process it and put it into the right format, and that's another common way to do that, um, you know, pushing it into a, a database uh, in a more systematic way. And we can share a couple of links to um, that, that kind of outline a, some of these approaches that different programs have used. That's great. Uh, a question about setting up the ComCare HQ account. Once uh, users are in, I noticed that on the screen, and, and I had a question from someone noticing the same, it, it does ask what type of app we would like to build. Should we go ahead and select a type of app that we'd like to build now or wait to, uh, until the next session to choose that? Uh, you can certainly, no need to go in any further than that if you see you arrive on that dashboard page. So when you create a new uh, project, there's no application in it yet, so it's asking you, uh, trying to kind of give you a head start on what type of app you want to build. You're definitely welcome if you want to go ahead and try to play around with it a little bit, then you can, um, you know, pick one of those. I think one of them is a survey uh, or something like that. That's like a pretty simple place to start, uh, and you're welcome to just sort of explore and try um, building out anything you would like. Uh, though, no, we'll go over those next steps um, as far as, like, what those different options do during the next session. Great. Um, a question about languages. Uh, what language options are there for ComCare? Can workers use it who don't speak English? Great question. Definitely, yeah. I'd say most of our apps are not in English. Uh, in fact, it's like a funny thing when we are looking at each other's apps because they're often built in another language. The English translations aren't always quite right. So you see sort of funny things in there sometimes. Um, so all, all, the entire content of the form can be put, like when you're adding different questions, uh, you can say, I want this application to be in English, Hindi, and French, or whatever it is, and then you'll have three kind of rows to enter the question text, um, so that depending upon what language the user wants to view it in, they'll see the language, sorry, they'll see the, the text in those languages. Uh, and then you can also translate the entire uh, user interface. So like you may have seen uh, in the demo, there's like a start button and no, a message that says, do you want to save the form as you complete? All of those messages can be translated into any language. 
I will say that our platform has been used more frequently in some languages than others, and the way those user interface translations work is it's kind of crowdsourced a little bit. So um, a lot of people have used the platform in French. So if you put your application in French, then you'll find that almost everything other than the content that you're adding, like all of the user experiences in French uh, already. But if you do it in a language where there haven't been many Comcare users already, like if you did it in Polish, then probably almost none of it is translated. So you would have to go in and add those translations uh, kind of as you go. Got it. Sounds great. And I guess we're approaching the end of the call, and I think that's all the questions I received. So if there are any last questions, feel free to put those in, and I think well, you know, we'll be able to stick around for a moment or two to answer those. But otherwise, we'll close the session there. Um, as Alex mentioned, do set up that Comcare HQ account before the next session, otherwise you won't be able to participate in the app building. And um, also, if you have not done so, set up the Demaji Academy account that we emailed around earlier, and that'll enable you to participate in all the self-guided practice activities. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can email uh, me at meta at rescue.org or use the links that Alex shared earlier. Um, you could also get in touch on Twitter at US Meta Support. And lastly, I'll mention, um, at, like Alex said, we are going to be recording this training and, and posting it in different places. For any colleagues you may have who aren't present on uh, this session but may wish to join the future session, we'd strongly recommend watching the previous recordings before jumping in uh, to the trainings we're hosting on the 13th, 15th, and 22nd. That'll give them a chance to get up to speed and, and follow along with everyone. So with that, again, I'll, I'll close the call, but thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.